Now, I wanna get cooking in the kitchen, because that's how I do it on the good stuff. We start off in the kitchen, am I right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Feeling good. Any good party, in my opinion, starts right here. So when I'm making party food, I always want to make it look really impressive, but without it being a ton of work, because that's the worst. There's nothing worse than showing up to someone's house for a party, and it looks like they've been crying in the kitchen 10 minutes before you got there. <laughs> This is not gonna do that to you. This is a fantastic recipe. Now, maybe about a year, a year and a half ago, there were these like upside down tart things that were going viral online. And honestly, I was kind of blown away. I don't get like really surprised about a lot of food things, but this one really did. It's so smart. Basically, you're making like little puff pastry tarts, but instead of topping the pastry like you normally would, you almost actually build it all upside down. Like you hide all the toppings underneath, put that pastry on top, and then like a pineapple upside down cake, you flip it over once it's baked. That's gonna give you like max caramelization because all that topping is now touching a, a hot pan and then crispy beautiful topping no soggy bottoms here we don't want that. So I am making my honey balsamic shallot tarts because we're going a little bit fancy today. I'm very excited about it. Shallots are the fanciest onion. Uh, probably, I love a leek, but like shallots, very fancy. They're cute, they're delish, a little French, very nice. But the first thing we need to do is get started on the pastry. And this is a tricky one. You go to the freezer section of your grocery store. <laughs> and you buy a roll of puff pastry, and then you just thaw it. That's all you have to do, because I'm not gonna ask you to make puff pastry. So we've got one roll right here that I've just laid out. If you buy it in a block, just roll it out until it's about, I'd say, like a foot square. And I wanna cut this into eight roughly equal rectangles. So just split it in half. The only trick with puff pastry is you wanna make sure you keep it cold, because that way all of the layers of butter that somebody else, some machine or something, has worked into this puff pastry is gonna get beautiful and light and flaky when it hits the heat of the oven. If this gets too warm, that's not really gonna happen, so we don't want that. So I'm just gonna pop those aside just to give me a little bit of room on my board. And now I'm gonna chat shallots. So pastry, done. We got nothing else to do with that. Now, for the shallots, you wanna use about three to four medium-sized shallots. And shallots are really nice. They're long, they're really, really lovely, they're kind of dainty, and they kind of have a soft onion flavor, kind of like a mixture between onion and garlic. So what I wanna do is, I've got some already sliced up, but what I'm gonna do is just trim off the ends, and then I'm gonna slice it long ways. You could do it like round side, but I like the look if you do it this way. See how pretty that is? It looks absolutely beautiful. I'm chopping that about, I'd say, three quarters of a centimeter thick. So that's looking great. I'm gonna add that on into my bowl. And now it's time to build these tarts. But again, we're doing it upside down, so it's gonna feel like we're making a lot of mistakes. It's gonna feel like no tart you've ever made. So I've got a pan with a little bit of parchment paper on here. That is key. That's gonna make sure nothing sticks, but you're still gonna get the heat from the pan through there. So the first thing I need is some olive oil. I'm just gonna drizzle in roughly the same kind of shape and size as each little rectangle onto this parchment paper. So just kinda of give it a little drizz, little drizz. Again, right, this doesn't look like I'm making a tart. It looks like I'm making a mess, but we are not. That's what the parchment paper's for. Just make sure you are using parchment paper and not wax paper. Wax paper will light on fire, uh, on fire in your oven. My university roommate did that, came home. I was like, why, does, why did someone light chicken on fire? <laughs> Don't do it. All right, now onto there, we're gonna add on our balsamic vinegar. Just a little splash, so I'm gonna pop my thumb on top of here and just do a little glug right on top. Now, if you get it outside of that little rectangle, that's fine, because clearly I'm doing it. Um, but honestly, it's gonna be fine. It's just gonna give you that sweetness, that little bit of acidity. It's gonna give a real nice kind of lightness and brightness onto these tarts. So right now it looks like a Jackson Pollock painting, so that's a delight. Now I'm gonna go on with a little bit of honey. Just runny honey, you could also do this with maple syrup. Just a little drizzle of that right on top. And again, when you think about it, this is actually going to be the top of those tarts. So that's gonna give you that caramelization, it's gonna sweeten things up. My honey is classically a little tricky to pour, there we go. Again, just drizzles. And then we're gonna go on with some herbs. Now you could do anything from sage or thyme. I'm going on with thyme, so just kind of grab your little sprig of thyme, I'm covered in balsamic vinegar, give it a little bit of a pull, and you get all of those leaves in this hand and then the twig in that. Just give that a scatter over each one, just to give a little bit of extra flavor. If you had rosemary here, that would work beautifully. But again, I love that time for this dish. Absolutely beautiful. Now, those shallots. Lay those on in any which way. You can be as cute as you'd like, as kind of messy as you'd like. And make sure you're doing it upside down. So whatever the cutest side of the shallot, that's the side you do facing down. Pop those on. Then I'm gonna season that with a little bit of salt. 
Little bit of pepper as well. I'm gonna keep building these. But now we get to use my favorite ingredient. It is the holidays. What is bursting in my fridge at all times? The cheese drawer. The cheese drawer is my, I do love nutmeg. Oh wait, someone yelled nutmeg. I do love nutmeg. Actually, nutmeg in these, pretty good. Unfortunately, I don't have a pocket today. So no nutmeg. Um, but I've got about 150 grams of a soft, fine herb cheese. You could also do goat's cheese, you could do brie, anything you're feeling. You, everybody knows what I'm talking about when I say this one, right? <laughs> That's the cheese you want to use. All right, so I'm just going to kind of break that apart over top of those little bits of shallots. I'm just going to show you how to form these tarts. So pop that cheese on, grab one of your pastry squares, and I'm just going to pop that right on top. Give it a little bit of a press down. Now over the break, I was just brushing these with a little bit of egg wash. That's going to help kind of guarantee a golden brown color on these beautiful tarts. Egg wash is literally just an egg with either about a tablespoon of milk or a little bit of water beaten in. And basically what that does is it gives that, yeah, golden brown, that crunch, that beautiful color. So we eat with our eyes first. It's all about looking like totally delicious. And in my opinion, golden brown, most delicious flavor. For sure. All right, now I've got a fork, and what I'm gonna do is almost just kind of press this pastry down just to kind of seal in what's going on beneath. That's gonna help kind of discourage anything leaking out from the sides. If it doesn't hold, honestly, it's fine. Basically, this is also fine because it makes it look like um, toaster pastries, <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about, which I absolutely love. My husband calls these hand pies, and uh, I personally don't think there's a better pie than a hand pie. So that means you don't need to eat it with a fork. You just get to eat it with your hands. So what a delight. All right. Now, these little babies need to go into a 350 degree oven, which is actually a relatively low oven for pastry or puff pastry. But I want them to bake for about 25 minutes. That's going to give enough time for those shallots to tenderize, get golden brown, totally delicious, and for that pastry to puff up and get wonderful. Now, while those bake, I'm gonna make a little bit of a kind of sauce to go with it, because I love a little bit of a sauce with anything I'm doing. I'm gonna make a reduced balsamic. So like just a balsamic reduction. You can buy these at the grocery store if you've got one hanging around in your pantry that you maybe got last holiday season. Feel free to use that as well, but it's really easy to make. So I've got a pan here. This is already on the heat, so I'm about to get a vinegar facial. I'm not mad about it. <laughs> but it's very punchy. So I'm gonna add about half a cup of balsamic vinegar into my pan. Nice. And also hot tip, if you need to clean your pan, this is the best way to do it. Dump your vinegar huh, whoo, into a hot pan. Whoo, that has a nice, nice smell. All right, so about half a cup of vinegar goes into that pan, and then I'm gonna sweeten that with a little bit of honey. If you were doing ma maple syrup, feel free to add a little maple, even a little brown sugar is nice, but about a tablespoon or two of that beautiful honey goes in. And then I'm gonna season that with some pepper. If you wanted to, you could do salt, but I'm just sticking with pepper today. Now what you wanna do is you bring that up to a simmer and let that cook down for about, I'd say eight to 10 minutes. Now you want this to actually be a little less syrupy in the pan than you wanna eat it later, because as it cools, it kind of firms up a little bit, or it can if you cook it down too much, and then you kind of end up with like vinegar candy, and we don't want that. So let that do its thing. I've got some over here. My tarts are back here. I made some earlier, and they are already cooling. So basically what you want to do is set them aside. Allow them to cool upside down like how you made them. After about five minutes, you can flip them over. Can you deal with the amount of caramelization we have got going on here? Like. The crunchy, the cheese is golden brown. The shallots are cooked down and tender. I am arguably too excited. Can you smell them? Yeah. They smell so good. I'm really pumped about it. Earlier today, one of our camera operators was like, it smells like garlic bread, and that's never a bad thing. Now, to serve these guys, just pop them onto a platter. Anything that's kind of decorative and holiday will really, really kind of set it off. And I like a little added crunch. We've got the crisp, which is gonna be absolutely beautiful. But for some added crunch, I've got some pistachios here. So just give that a little bit of a scatter. I like to add them now as opposed to earlier because if I did them earlier, they could burn in the oven. And then I've got that balsamic glaze in a tiny little squeeze bottle, which is a delight. Just drizzle that right over top. And you have got the most stunning, wow. adorable little appetizer. party, you're sitting down to a delicious app, what's better than while digging into these amazing tarts than a little friendly competition? I mean, who doesn't love a party game? Well, studio audience, thanks to Hitster, we're sending you home with a couple of great ones. Uh, you're getting the musical party game and the musical party game guilty pleasures. Hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.